Hello everyone, welcome to our Let's Play series of Expeditions Viking. This is Colonel RPG as usual, and I'm very happy that you're to join me today here to this fantastic soundtrack of the Picts up here in the north. Uh, we came here because of a bounty, we're going back home because of a bounty, but in between episodes, I, um, I have been looking uh, at, at, my, um, at my journal, uh, and I think this one over here being an actual quest that doesn't have a time, which is interesting enough, but I don't think there's any quests with times, uh, with, you know, with the time schedule, time limits? Yep. Um, so we're going back home because, look at this, we need to sail to the Orkneys. Uh, so I think we're going, instead of sailing up there, we're taking a detour and we're going back to Denmark, uh, to see if, um, yeah, if Eifura is is okay. Hopefully she is, but for right now we're going back to Ethelred because we have solved the problem in the thicket, uh, as it were, in, uh, where where was it actually? Uh, still made between Pictavia and Northumbria and Dunfries, that's right. So let's go back home, that that little, little uh, segment of pipes is all too short, it should be longer, it should be longer. Uh, reminds me of a, well, a very, very fantastic song by uh, Sabaton called, um, oh my god, how is it called? Oh, I don't know what what it's called. It's about the the Highlanders. It's about the war between Scot Scotland and uh, and England. And it's pretty awesome. It's got a lot of pipes and all that sort of that sort of stuff. It's pretty cool. So I'm gonna try and sleep. I could sleep over there. That's one day and one and two hours. One day of five hours. I think this requires a detour. Very high food. That's good for me. High food, good shelter. The shelter doesn't really matter. So let's rest over there. Uh, and uh, yeah, we're not gonna take a detour over here because that's way too far away. And uh, yeah, everybody's gone hungry. Everybody's gone hungry again. Everybody's gone hungry again. And what's well, just different people going hungry? Let's camp over here. And uh, also, we have a quest that we need to talk to our father in in the dreams. It, it, so maybe it's it's gonna happen right now. What do I know? Uh, so let's get a, get a little bit of guard. Let's get a little bit of that. Let's see if Idis can preserve. There it is. Four meat will spoil. Let's preserve that a little bit. And uh, let's have her preserve as well. And then I'm not going to craft anything or anything. So let's just make camp and see what happens. Oh, you're enjoying a rare moment of respite in the company of a nice bowl of nice hot stew. When, uh... Well, of a nice bowl of nice hot... No, I misread. Uh, when uh, Nephia lowers herself down next to you with a weary groan. She squeezes her shoulder twice as though to check if it's still firmly attached. Then she tugs at the edges of her armor. Uh, would you help me out with this? Uh, sure. You untie the laces and lift the armor off her head, eliciting another groan of discomfort. Is she injured? Oh my god. You notice that her shirt is soaked with blood she is at the shoulder. She rolls up her sleeve and reveals a brutal bloody bruise. Pro procuring a piece of cloth, she dips it in water and dabs the edges of the wound. Uh, why don't you let Morkant take a look at that? It's just a flesh wound, she says. There's no need for tr to trouble him about it. Uh, well, let me help you then. You clean the wound with water and then fetch the dried cow piss to this... Sure. Uh, to disinfect. <laughs> what? Cow piss? Dried cow piss to disinfect? Sure. What? These guys know better. Uh, the, uh, how about survival? Yeah, sure. Uh, you can feel her tense up as you uh, apply the ointment. Oh, it's an ointment. But she doesn't make a sound. <clears throat> it was bloody sloppy of me, she, lets, uh, she says, to let him get past my defenses. I was fortunate he didn't make better use of the opportunity. And she hands you a roll of woven cloth and you wrap it tightly around her shoulder. Knowing Nephia, she won't let a bruise like this affect her fighting. Thank you. You will always take good care of me. Uh, sure, let's go with that. Squeeze her other shoulder comfortingly. Wait a minute, what? Hmm. Romance options may lead to long-term commitment. Oh, really? We saw one of these... Oh, I didn't... Oh, I didn't... So, general options will... Progress the conversation. You don't say. Uh, so, yeah, we got this opportunity before. I don't know if it was with her, though. No, we did. We, I'm not sure if we got this opportunity with her. Uh, but we did get an opportunity for a romance option with uh, Ketil. Uh, and uh, I just roleplay. I didn't notice. I thought, I mean, I, I maybe I did notice. I Now that I think of it, I think I noticed this, the... The heart, but it was just hug him, and uh, I did. I didn't know it was a romance option. I thought it was just you know friendship and all that sort of stuff. You know, it's just because it's try to bring up the, their relationship with us. But sure, uh, let's go for it. Uh, I didn't comment a long time ago. Actually, did I comment it or did I say it out loud? I don't know. But one way or another, I did say that uh, I was hoping that maybe I could uh, 
you know, try to romance her sister and not her, because that'll be an interesting thing. Um, especially because she has a... Her personality is, uh, well, apart from when she goes completely out of character, which kind of happened when we left. A little bit, not really. But her personality, she's very, you know, straightforward and, uh, and just, you know, she goes for it. She's pragmatic. Uh, so she makes a very good friend. Uh, for a lover, I, you know, pragmatically speaking, it's better to have, you know, somebody at home that would, uh, you know, make, um, you know, make people love me in as a proxy, as a proxy, you know, uh, but in, especially because, you know, her sister is back home. So that would, that could be politically beneficial, but I'm not sure that we're going to be able to do that. Um, so I'm going to bank, I'm going to bank here. It might be possible that we do that, but. To be honest, I would be really surprised if the game did that. And uh, from what we've seen of the game so far, I don't think surprises is, is something that I uh, that I should be expecting uh, in terms of just character development and uh, story development. So yeah, my whole thing about being stabbed in the back by my friends, I don't think it's gonna happen. I think it's all on the, at my fingertips, and uh, this is all on my fingertips. I'm gonna ske squeeze her other shoulder comfortingly. You feel yeah, you feel her muscles relax under your touch. Okay, she gained morale. Uh, and eventually she places her own hand on top of yours. You sit there for a while, feeling the warmth of the crackling fire. Nephia brushes a strand of golden hair away from her face. What have we gotten ourselves into? She's, she asks. Uh, uh, we didn't get ourselves into anything. What, what does she mean? Is she talking about... Okay, so my first thought is, did I actually just commit... <laughs> uh, because that would make sense for her to ask that, but I think she might be talking about um, the war. I think, yeah, let's, let's, yeah. We came here because we had no other option. Perhaps that's true, she asks, she says. But we are right to, are we, are we right to come here? This place seems more peaceful than home, more ordered. Are we right to bring our trouble here? Uh, did we actually bring our trouble here? I think other people brought their tr trouble here. Um, let's see. They're no more ordered, simply ordered dif differently. Their peace is nothing but the iron grip of a king. That's also true. Mm. Uh, yeah, let's go with that one. She thinks on that for a moment, then she nods. I think you're right. Peace and tyranny can bring uh, can be difficult to tell apart from outside. But to those who live under threat, perhaps the difference isn't so subtle. She leans over and places a tender kiss on your cheek. No matter how bad it gets, I'll always be here for you. Is it normal for you to kiss me? I Because that never happened. What? That, sure. With that, Nephia slings her armor over her shoulder, and her good shoulder, actually, and saunters off to resume her chores for the night. That was all very well written until the actual point of the kiss. Because that was never put... That was really well written, actually. That was really, really good, but it w there's no precedent for her kissing me, even on the cheek. Please make that happen before. But I don't know if Vikings kiss, kiss themselves on, on cheeks and stuff like, you know, other cultures did and do. Uh, let's see. Myself, mine included. Not men between men, though. Well, it's not, it's not considered taboo, but uh, it's not customary. Uh, let's see. Men between men? That's not how it's said. Men with men, I should say. I should say. Um, so let's see. Nephia, Morkant, Vanadis all come with me. They're all very... Nephia is unwavering, but he's just devoted. I think it's because he's an optimistic and I screwed him up a little bit before with my words and all that. Oh, that's right. This loading screen. Look at this. I don't know what that sound is. I have no idea. Ah, Aeophorwick. My second home. In a Indeed. Sense. The smells of the food down Market Street always make me salivate. Didn't you say that always before? Anyway, let's have a chat with this guy. He, You're back, Norseman! Yeah, I am. I always want to talk to you. He's <laughs> the first one. I never remember who he is. I thought he was a trader. But the trader is right there, and I'm actually going to trade. I have uh, plenty of things to trade. I have plenty of valuables. Uh, but I don't know if valuables is the best... If I should keep the... Va I don't know what the valuables are for! I need wood, though. That much I know. The merchant recognizes you a mile away and immediately beckons you to over, over to his stall. Well, come back. Yes, indeed. Let's see what you have to say. Uh, so he w really demands uh, salvage, but so do I. Uh, and that's in low supply, which is kind of a problem. So I'm just going to... Oh, I don't have... Yeah, I could give him hides. 
but I don't really I don't really want salvage. It's in very low supply wood. Come on. Really? Okay, I could give him hides. Oh, it's not that expensive actually. Huh. Really? Interesting. Uh what do you want? Very high demand. High demand on salvage, normal demand on that, so he doesn't really want much. Thank you very much. Always a pleasure, he says. Will that be all for today? Yep, that'll be all. <laughs> that was that was pleasant. I like that. Will that be all for today? I like that one. I mean it's straightforward, but still. I like it. Uh okay, so let's go to the Smith. Actually, wait a minute. I was say oh, the Smith is a level four. I was saying, you know, you know the patch with the whole thing of you not being able to craft level 5 items until very late in the game and all that sort of stuff. Um, which basically means that crafting is irrelevant until late game, I would say, because you get plenty of weapons. So as long as you multiply your, you know, you just diversify your team, you should be okay. Don't get axe wielders, basically, uh, and you'll be fine. Uh, sick guy over here is a level 4. But I'm here to collect... No, no, he's not, the, he's not the crafter. I'm here to collect my bounty. Oh, is that so? Which one might that be? Okay, well, all of them. Can I say all of them? No. The killer has been dealt with. You brought him alive! Did I? Well, I don't didn't really, but yeah. Well, done. Here's 98 pence, as promised. Okay, uh, what about the home runner? Oh, wait a minute. Yeah, the, ro the nobles are pacified, and the guardsmen's families, uh, or family, have found some piece of justice. Yeah, I suppose so. Uh, I brought home the runaway. Her family has already given their thanks to the king. In turns, you get your co payment. What about the tax collector? We, he will see his day before the court soon enough. He, had he not fled, the sentence would have been lenient. Now, I doubt it. 55 pence for bringing him alive. Uh, what about the pagan? He won't be a problem. The threat of his sorcery seemed to have dimin diminished. I gained 1,440 uh, valuables. Let's just make the conversion. Did he? No, he didn't give me. Dang it. Okay, I can see the four. Uh, so... 1,100 valuables is 55 pence. Okay, so each pence is 50 valu uh, valu valuables. So that's good. Uh, so yeah, the threat of sorcery seemed to have diminished. The, monk, uh, the monks debate how best to deal with him. As for you, your reward. Okay, so he was alive. Yeah, and the higher man won't be a threat anymore. Finally brought low, huh? Well done. You've managed what many have tried and failed to do. Here's your well-earned coin. Indeed. Quite a lot of coin, actually. Uh, that was the last one. I have no further work for you. You've done a great service for Northumbria, and you have my thanks. There we go. We got a bunch of uh, skill points, which is really nice. Let's look at that, not this one. Oh, here comes the soundtrack with the pipes. Oh, not the pipes, the flutes. No, it's, it's gone. Uh, so, what are we gonna do? Level 5s, I should have gotten them already, but I don't... Oh, wait a minute. I was saying last episode... And some of you might have already commented. Uh, I actually don't have internet right now when I'm when I'm recording. The there's been a few days with a couple less episodes than normal, uh, so I can't really comment too much on the uh, on your comments. Uh, but uh, hopefully the internet will be back when this video goes up. Who knows? Who knows? Um, but uh, yeah, it says right there the total that I have. So I can yeah, it's pretty good. It's which means that we could be close to the end of the game. Or have we ju just done... Because the, the maximum you can get is a, just a bit uh, above 300. Uh, at least according to the developers. Unless they change that, of course. Um, okay, so we have plenty of skills, which is great. Uh, so let's do some things. I'm going to want to go that route on the on him. Because he needs, he just needs, he needs that. Um, let's see. Uh... Okay, let me let me look into this and I'll be right back. I've just now noticed. Oh, and by the way, I've unlocked the last level here. Um, but I've just now noticed. Well, actually, two things: the taunt ability, uh, whatever it is. Uh, you might have seen this. It's an ass. It, you, you show them your ass. That's the taunt. That that. Mm. Uh, but sure. <laughs> uh, now I've just noticed the armor crafting. Uh, that I'm that wasn't noticing before uh, it's over here well somebody has that I think yeah I'm going I'm going for him because he's got a lot of skill points uh, while well, I'm trying to crafting artisan armor smithing there it is it's only four levels yeah but not everybody can have that you see that it's weird yeah uh, adds the ability to craft helmets and armor so there it is I don't know why he can't craft that uh, Oh, requires one rank in crafting. Huh. Okay. Uh, yeah, let me continue looking around at the skills. 
Okay, so everybody is set up. This is this is really good. This is really really good. Uh, that it's 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 great. We're it's great. It's great. Our team is in a fantastic place right now. Uh, really happy about that. So let's continue. Where do we need to go? We need to go to Ethelred. I think. Shouldn't I have? Yeah, I need to track this one. How is it? No. Yeah, let's go. Let's go in there and say hi to the guy because you know he's the guy. Is the man. And uh, hopefully he'll tell me, yeah, now I have a... Uh... Well, actually, he didn't. He said he'll only give me the support if I feel... Or if he manages to finish the war with the Picts. Not if I help him here. Let's see what happens. I'm going to save the game just in case. Ethelred's Hall is buzzing with activity. Yet the King's men have you through directly. Oh, rave you through directly. Directly. The war has begun, Sigthorn. No need to tell me what transpired in Dunfreeze. My messengers have already told me everything. My arm already marches upon Pictavia. We hold Hadrian's Wall, so we will meet the enemy on our terms. Uh... Yeah, we'll not fight, fight on the front lines if that's what you're planning. Ethelred chuckles mirthlessly. Of course not. I have much better use for you. I wonder if he... I wonder if he really expected that or, uh, expected that or not, but yeah. There is a large set of caves in the highlands along the road from Adrian's Wall to Perth. My spies tell me Constantine is mustering a force there to ambush our army. Lefor Rick holds one of the most important passages through the old wall. Go and meet him there, and he will tell you what he needs to do. What he needs you to do. Uh, yeah, this will be fun. Before you go, I have something for you. Uh, and the optimistic followers have gained morale, that's good. Ethelred snaps his fingers and a man, finally dressed in foreign clothes, approaches, holding a sword in a scabbard. This is Gerbrand, a merchant from Frisia. The uh, merchant kneels before you and presents you with a sword on outstretched hands. Honorable Norse Jarl, His Royal Majesty King Ethelred of Northumbria has commissioned this sword as a gift for his ally. The sword was crafted by Ulfbert, the greatest and most well-renowned smiths in the Frankish Empire. I have brought it here on Ulfbrist's behalf. Uh, let's unsheath the sword and examine it. It's a remarkable sword, clearly strong and durable, yet light and flexible. It's clear that the person who forged it has mastered techniques that most smiths couldn't even begin to understand. Ethelred looks very pleased. May it serve you well. Now go, find Leofric. He needs your help. Okay, we need to, to go to Leofric as well. He's not here, so yeah. Uh, we have a new goal, meet Lefric in his camp. Oh, no, he's outside, he's back there, okay. Okay, and now our objective is to leave. Fort of Thick, no, I'm not, I don't want to track that. Into the dark, yeah, that's, uh, that's gonna take a while. Uh, so the Hellsoth curse, we're going back home. Where, where's, can you tell me? Thank you. There we go, we got an exit over here. That's all I need. Uh, we have plenty of wood as well, let me check. Uh, that's four days and 15 hours. That's not... Oh, no, wait a minute. That's not where I need to go, because I need to go to the boat. And my boat is in the river, right there. Pricker! Hey, Pricker! How's it going? I know I'm talking to a boat. I know. It's fine. Everybody's over here, I think. Eslifer is over there. Falky. Is that one of ours? I think so. I think that's... Yeah, that's the archer that I never, ever, ever use. Freya! Uh, oh, speaking of which, let me look at my equipment. That's right. We have a sword. Let's see how good it is. Uh, in comparison to yours. Can't be damaged in combat. A beast! A beast! What? He grabs at your clothes, animal panic writ across his face. Please, you have to help me! Uh, slow down, explain. His, his fingers tighten and he clutches at you as though the safety of his life depended upon it. It'll come for me next! A great black dog, the fires of hell in his eyes. All who look upon it will die. See there, across the bridge, it feasts in the alleyway on the victim before me. He gathers himself, eyes still watering with terror. It will not catch me, no, it will not catch me. Yeah, you run, man. You run. I'm gonna save you. Let me also save the game just in case. Save many things. Wait a minute. What? You there! Cast a glance upon my selection. You won't be disappointed. I promise you. What? What feast? What dog? What's going on? I hear the dog. I went to the wrong... Yeah, it's this side. Ooh, cough, cough. Yeah, it's all fine. It's, it's this way. Oh, yeah. That's the dog in there. Or there should be a dog. What? A bladder and... You kneel down to examine the corpse. Its wounds are many and worryingly savage. Okay, let's listen carefully first. 
through the somewhat foreign sounds of F4 Week's urban life, you make out a distinct impression of chains rattling as they are dragged across the floor. Okay, let's examine the area. Though difficult to make out, you discern tracks in the packed dirt of the alleyway. Large paws, large paw prints and grooves scraped, uh, scraped by long claws. This looks like a dog attacked me. I'll be eat a particularly unpleasant dog. Yeah, let's see if anyone nearby keeps dogs then. Okay, yeah, thank you, Aidis. The flesh of its chest is nothing so much as glistening ribbons of fetid guts. Strong jaws and sharp teeth have torn hungrily into it. Okay, so whoever kept a terrible, terrible dog like this in a chain that broke somehow and didn't feed a dog is really a terrible person. Uh, let me see if I can track this quest over here. Um, the Bargest Cometh. Is Bargast the name for a dog? I think so. Interesting. <laughs> because a Bargast is a is a creature in, in The Witcher. How would I... Oh. The, she has a hound. Look at you all menacing and foreign. Come to raid the home of a poor old woman? I warn you, my dogs are fiercer than they look. Well, do you let your dogs roam at night? She laughs a really hacking wheeze. My darlings did not kill that poor man in the alley. Is that not why you're here? Be glad you have not seen the creature that did it. Uh, what is the creature that haunts your city? Is is it the Get of Ferrir? Does the omen of death loom beyond this city? She asks. You know well, you know as well as I that it does. A moment ago, my darlings went mad with fear. They barked at the walls like the devil himself was there. Mark my words, Norseman. Another victim lies within the old walls. Where, when did she mention Bargist? I... I don't understand, but sure. Bargist? Her eyes grow wide and bright, a strange fervor coming over her old form. It enters our city from time to time, it does. A great black dog with fiery eyes. The sneakets and ginnels of Elferwick have become its abode. Death follows where the Bargist passes. Beware the rattles of chains. Tell me more. When it appears, all dogs follow its howling and baying. When it lays across the threshold of your house, your end is foretold. Superstitious drivel, says Morkant. But no, it cannot, uh, it cannot cross running water. It will find a way to you, yes. But it may buy some time. Uh, you believe the strangest things. There must be more evidence of this creature elsewhere. Okay. So I need to search for another victim within the city walls. Well, that's where I wanted to go, but... Quest marker, please point me in the right direction. Right there. Thank you very much for sparing me the time of going around and wasting everybody's time as I looked upon... Well, the quite interesting looking city over here. I find it interesting that they did this. You see these walls over here? So this was a Roman fortress, and these are Roman ruins, and they built a city in the ruins themselves, which is interesting, because I'm pretty sure this didn't actually happen, or did it? I mean, it makes sense, right? But then again, I ask you, um, if you have a wall all crumbled up like this, that doesn't really serve any purpose, wouldn't you take stones out of there and build your house with that instead of making it with wood? Because it's easier, <laughs> right? Wouldn't you make the, the house at least use the little bit of wall that you have and make the wood on top of it. Mm, but anyway, oh, oh, yeah. The stench of gore hangs heavy in the air. You kneel down to examine the ruined remains. Okay, let's search the area first. There are signs of struggle and panic throughout the grubby alleyway, but your attention is drawn to the bloody tracks leading along the wall down towards the river. Look there, it ran off, says Nephia. Tracks seem fresh, can't have happened too long, uh, too long ago. Okay, let's look at the face. It is a bloody mask twisted into a grimace of fear and pain. For the briefest moment, you feel a niggling sense of familiarity. Then you recognize him. The frightened man who pleaded for your help earlier. Oh, the dog got him. Poor bastard, says Nephew. Guess he was right. The beast did get him. Well, he wasn't right because th he said, Oh, the beast won't get me. But yeah, let's look at the body. He is laying belly down. His back and arms are torn to shreds. There are wounds around his ankles and lower legs as well. Try to defend himself, then run away. Got tripped up and savaged, says Nephew. Indeed. Okay, so let's go. Let's hunt this dog down and end his, this misery. There's a bit. Oh, there it is. Ah. What is that? It is. I can't tell what. 
what race it is. A wolfhound? A bloodhound? No, it's not a bloodhound. The bloodhounds aren't the blood the bloodhounds. Oh, look at that! We have a, a preparation uh, stage. Awesome. Uh, aren't the bloodhounds the? Uh... He's rapid. What does that actually mean? Uh, it means that attacks inflict infection. Lovely. Just exactly what I needed. Uh, okay, so I'm gonna stay. I am. How many shields do I have? I have two. So I'm gonna have you. So yeah, there's. Uh, I'm gonna need something else. Oh, I can't do anything else. Oh, come on. Okay, so the dog is not gonna go th around, I don't think. So what I'll do is I'll bring you over there. And then I'll bring you over here. And I'll bring you over there. And you over here. So you're ready. Oh, by the way, I, I uh, gave Nephia and a few others um, an ability that increases their movement. Uh, and also decreases the uh, penalty that uh, armor has. So there we go. I think we're good. What is the dog going to do? A block. As I expected. Oh, that's, that's perfect. <laughs> that was really... Interesting. You see that? 21 to 21 expected. Oh, by the way, I'm, I never look at that, and I should. I'm an idiot. Um, but, uh... Why does it... Huh. That was the easiest battle ever. <laughs> A single guy could have done that. With a shield, of course. <laughs> and that ability. But there we go. Um, reputation in Northumbria has increased. Uh, and the quest has been finished. I gained skill points, which is really great. Because that means that she will now have that. Lovely. And the next thing that I want to give her is the heavy sleeper. Uh, because th that, I, that sounds a little bit weird. It's not... Yeah, it sounds the heavy sleeper is weird. It's not what it is. Basically, it, she only needs one turn to rest instead of two, which allows her to craft uh, things uh, faster. Uh, but also, since we gained the ability... No, I'm still waiting for this one. Oh, wait a minute. I can upgrade this one. There we go. Lovely. Fantastic. Uh, speaking of which, I am going with... Uh, I'm giving him... Uh, what am I giving him? Uh, benediction. Yeah, that's right. So now he's got uh, supplication. Applies the side as non, non candescent immune to fire to an ally. That sounds pretty interesting. Non candescent? That's like incandescent. Incandescent means something that can be caught on, can caught on, uh, you know, catch on fire. Um, non candescent? I'm not really sure if that's a, a word, but it is now. Okay, let's get out of here. Don't really have anything else to do. It's good that we got that quest though. Just a little bit of experience, a little bit of uh, reputation here. We got the Barghest gone, and uh, we now are going to take our Pricker and uh, go away. Its owner must be a king of some sort. Yes, it must. Let's go back. Uh, so, I, 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 sh I saved. There we go. Okay. So now we're ready to go to the other side, to Skern again. Two days, 11 hours remaining. That's not too long ago, or too long to travel, so that's pretty good. But for right now, I'm Colonel RPG, and this has been Expeditions Viking. I really hope you've enjoyed it, and if you did, go ahead and leave a comment, like the video, but above all, thank you so much for watching, and I hope I'll see you next episode. Bye-bye!